Hey everyone, today is April 26th, 2023, and I'm going to be starting my garden indoors, because here in northern Maine, our growing season doesn't start until about June 1st. The northern part of the state, like very far north above me, is June 15th. Up there, they actually still have over a foot of snow on the ground in certain areas, and I'm actually going to take a ride up there in about a week, and I will show you guys all that up there. That'll be kind of cool to see. Currently here, we don't have any snow on the ground, but I'm going to start these indoors because we still have a, ch a possibility of frost. Typically, the second week of May is safe. That's when I planted a few things last year, but I haven't had a full-scale garden in a while. So I'm going to start it indoors just to get a little bit more out of the growing season. And we actually have a couple deep freezes still in the forecast and maybe a coating to an inch of snow coming up, it looks like, on Saturday. So I bought this grow lamp, even though here in this room there's a good amount of lighting from natural light. I want to have this. I'm going to find a way to suspend it over the table. I'm just going to have it set up here on the kitchen table for the next two weeks or so. I have a timer here. I'm going to put it on about 12 hours or so. So I got these planters here at Walmart. They work awesome. They have planters with much bigger, you know, if you want to make them bigger inside, if you wanted to start them in the house like a month in advance, but they're considerably more expensive and I'm just going to do this. So we're going to find out what is in this. I just bought this pack on eBay. Herlum, I mean Herlum, Garden Survival Seed Cash. So we're going to try using this. I bought this online, and there are a lot of seeds inside here. This is going to be awesome, but it doesn't specify exactly what, but I'm sure it's an awesome variety, and we're going to open this thing up and see what, exactly what we got inside. Now, some things that don't need a super long growing season, like corn, I think I'm going to plant just right in the ground outside. I'm going to make a little patch so we don't waste all these. But this year I want to do a whole bunch of peppers and a whole bunch of tomatoes. Recently I really like tomatoes and I've been eating them all the time. I always avoided tomatoes pretty much my whole life. It's because I didn't like them as a kid, but my taste changed and all these years I just avoided them thinking I wouldn't like them anymore. So I have to try everything again that I used to not like and I actually do like a lot of it now. So we're going to open this thing up and I'm going to go into my eBay account and I'm going to see if I can find this seller and I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to buy it. Now this is in a Mylar bag. It's meant to last quite a few years. You know, just in case there's an emergency, you can go and start planting things. That's what this is sold for. And you can also keep this in your freezer, which will also extend the shelf life a whole bunch. This is a pretty expensive light bulb here. You see it does it different color spectrums. I believe this was about $60 at the Home Depot. That light fixture for it was about 8 And these kits right here are about, I think they were $6 a piece when I bought them. I've had these a while, so they're probably a little more now. And the timer, I think I got that at a tag sale at some point. So I'm going to open this thing up, and I'm going to sit down with a tripod and show you exactly what we got in here. All right, everyone. So we're going to sit down right now, and I'm going to open this up and see exactly what we got inside here. It's a resealable bag. And look how it's packaged in these tiny little Ziploc baggies. So in case you don't use it all up this year, this will probably still be good next year. You can put it right back in here, Ziploc it up, and like I said, put it in the freezer. So wow. I can't believe how many varieties of seeds came in this thing. Wow, that is a whole ton of seeds. So the first thing we got here is corn, trucker's favorite. It says 75 days and there are 40 to 50 seeds. So 75 days I'm assuming means what, when you actually get the crop? Um, right here we have bush bean. Pinto, and that is 56 days. Right here we got bean provider. I don't, I, I don't know. I knew what the word was, but I, I don't know why I didn't think it said that. 55 days. Right here we have 
Because they're like jumping in there. It's so weird. Wow, look at this. 50,000 seeds inside this little baggie. Hmm. Well, sprouting seeds, chai. Right here we have sprouting seeds. Oh my gosh. I can't pronounce some of these words. I don't know why. It's embarrassing. But there are, look at that, 135,000 of these seeds inside here. Wow. I, I also would like to do a lot of lettuce, which I'm sure is in here. Giant Ford Hook, 60 days. No, I'm just gonna leave. I'm just gonna leave my embarrassment in here. I thought about redoing it, and I I do kind of want to go through these again so I can be more smooth with it. So right here, chai seeds. There are fifty thousand of them, and it doesn't tell you how long it takes for them to germinate. Right here we have sprouting seeds, and the word I can't pronounce. It also doesn't tell you how long it takes. There are one hundred and thirty-five thousand seeds in here. So that is that's how you get up to the three hundred thousand. You know. Provider beans, 55 days. We had the bush bean, pinto, 56 days. We have trucker's favorite corn, 75 days. I'm probably going to plant that. Right here we have snap peas, sugar ran, 56 days. We have Swiss chard, giant ford hook, 60 days. Look at this, another 50,000 pack of flax seeds. Doesn't tell you how long it takes on those either. This one takes 45 days spinach, Bloomsdale. And it says there's up to 350 seeds in there. And right here we have sprouting seeds. Quinora? Quinoa. I, I don't know what that says. It's something I probably have never heard of. I don't know what that is, but there's 50,000 of those. Ah, oh, this is making me look like an idiot, these words. Summer squash. They're 45 days. Oh, lettuce. Yeah, I just mentioned I want to plant a good amount of lettuce. And that's, that grows so fast. Look at this, 30 to 40 days. Tomato. Uh, yeah, these are those gigantic ones, I think. Roma. 78 days. I really like to... Yeah, these red cherry tomatoes. We are planting some of these tonight. 72 days. I love those. And I'm actually going to plant some in a few pots that I can bring in the house and try to extend the season in the fall since we only have four months of growing season here. It's not that long at all. Watermelon. I've tried growing that in the past. 95 days. Um... And we are considerably colder up here, so I don't know if we'd even get a big one. But I always fail that watermelon. But I used to be good at growing pumpkins. I used to plant them on the edge of the yard. Um, and they used to just take over my mom's backyard. Right here we have melon planters jumbo. 50, uh, no, 86 days. That's cutting it close with our growing season, but I think it'd be okay. At Towards the end of the growing season, you can take bed sheets or plastic and throw it over everything when there's a light frost. And I've done that, and I've saved plants for another week or two into the season. Cantaloupe, parts of gold, 90 days. Never tried growing cantaloupe, and I, I don't think I'm going to do that. Look, oh, these are the giant tomatoes, right? Beef steak, 80 days. More tomatoes. Marglobe, I don't know what kind that is. Never heard of it. 78 days. Right here we have turnip. 56 days. Does tur I'm going to have to do research on a few of these. Does turnip, what like sandy soil? I have a big area in the yard that is just sand because I had excavation done, but I just didn't want to pay for the topsoil. What, what would grow in just sand? 
Um, cantaloupe hails best. That takes up to 90 days. So another cutting it close one, I, I feel. Spinach, 80 days. Never really like spinach. It's not the taste. It's just don't really care for it. Zucchini, I, I like that. Black zucchini, 45 days. I, I'm probably going to do that. Look, pumpkins. Out here, somebody's probably going to eat, you know, chew the pumpkins. Because I have an area with an electric fence, which is limited. I'm going to put my favorite crops in there. And things like this. I'll plant this in some random corner of the yard and let the vines just take over that area of the yard. And I just won't mow it until the end of the year. Yeah, I'm going to try pumpkins, but I feel like squirrels or something is going to eat it. Like, I, the reason I have the electric fence is because there's bears around here. Well, here we have honey rock melon, which is up to 88 days. Right here we have radish, which is 28 days. Wow, that's pretty fast. Champion radishes. I might do some radishes. Um, look at this. We have more lettuce. Gr uh, gourmet salad blend. Um, 65 days. That's a little longer than the other one. Right here we have rutabaga, American purple top, 90 days. And look at this, there's up to 1,500 seeds in there. Uh, onions, I, I actually love eating raw onions, but wow, 110 days. You know, all, everything I have read off so far, we can definitely grow. But I know a lot of farms are like in warm places, so I don't know how that would do it being such a long growing season. I feel like onions and potatoes would do very well in the sandy area. Jalapeno peppers, 75 days. I actually am going to make a hot pepper garden. Um, I just bought a bunch. I probably bought like six of these big metal troughs that animals and horses drink out of. I just drilled a bunch of holes in the bottom of it, filled it up with dirt for raised gardens. It's easier to do, especially if you live in a city. And they look pretty cool. If you don't like the silver color, you can paint them. I just painted one of them all camouflage and stuff. You know, I took green, black, and brown paint. But not like a military pattern. I did more stripes so it blends in kind of with the bushes and trees behind it, if you get what I mean. Okra. Um, spineless. 56 days. Um, mustard greens. Florida broadleaf, 48 days. A lot of these things I'm probably not going to plant. I know I don't like kale, 55 days. Right here we have lettuce head, uh, butter crush, 65 days. Um, dwarf Siberian kale. Right here we have early purple... Um, What What is that word right there? It, it's probably something stupid that's just slipping my mind. Cucumbers. I love cucumbers. I'm definitely planting these homemade pickles. So these are pickling cucumbers, but I planted those before and they're very good. Cauliflower. Yeah, I, I like that sometimes. Snowball. 60 days. Right here we have collard. 75 days. You know, I'm just not good with vegetables. I, I just didn't know there was so many vegetables. Cucumber, Boston pickling. Um, black eye peas. Um, it's cut off. I think that's California, abbreviated. Cow pea. Um, 60 days. Should have my glasses on for this. Melon, honeydew. 65 days. This is parsnip seeds. Harris early model. 130 days. Wow. That might be the longest one I've seen so far. Cabbage. Red acre. 75 days. We have right here. Carrots. Red core. 75 days. Right here we have. Edisto. Set up. Uh, E-D-I-S-T-O, Edisto, 47 melon, 95 days. We have Danvers carrots, 75 days. 
We have Brussels sprouts, Long Island improved up to 90 days. And we have asparagus. Asparagus, I like the taste, but I've always hated the texture of eating it. But I, I've honestly only tried it canned. I think I would like it crunchy out of the ground. Um, asparagus. This one says two to three years. Does that mean it comes back a couple times like a perennial? Because I know a few things in the vegetable garden last year came back. Broccoli, 60 days. I'll probably do broccoli. Never tried that, but I do love broccoli. Um, cabbage, golden acre, 65 days. We have beets. I've always hated beets. I've recently even tried them again. I just, they're not horrible. I, I'll definitely eat them, but it's not, I don't prefer I don't prefer them. Detroit dark red, 56 days. And here we got celery. I've always hated celery, except, unless it's in soup and it's covered up by strong broth or something. I've, I've never really liked celery. Utah Tall, 120 days. Right here we have Lettuce Leaf, Black Seeded Simpson, 60 days. And there's 2,500 of them in there. All right, so I gotta decide exactly what I'm gonna use here. Um, I don't want the flax seeds. I I want to find exactly what I'm looking for that I'm going to do in the garden. Um, never liked pinto beans. I'm definitely going to, that'll be my little patch of corn, I think. You got to grow corn in a patch or it just doesn't grow right. Like if you ever seen a farmer's field... The ones on the edges of the farmer's field never do good. Snap peas. Are these the ones that climb? Because this might be... I'm going to research this one. I might do that on the edge of my garden so it can climb the fence and occupy more space. Cucumbers. Definitely growing them. Onions. I'm going to give a try in the sandy area of the yard. That's not protected. But because they grow on their ground, I don't think the animals will mess with them. Radish. I'm going to research that. I feel like that might be something that would grow there. The only reason I'm saying that is because, you know, they grow a lot of potatoes in really dry states and onions and stuff. That's why I'm thinking that it'll do good in sand. Lettuce, definitely going to grow some of that. Um, mustard. What else are we going to... Cantaloupe, I really want to give that a try. Yeah, I'm going to put that somewhere, but I can't guarantee an animal won't get to it first. Animals in more lettuce. Animals always seem to get to stuff, you know, like right before it's ripe enough for a human. They just steal it. Bell pepper, definitely doing that. The California bell pepper. I'm not going to grow any of those cow peas. Cabbage, no. Melon. Pumpkin, yeah, I'll give that a try. 100% want the tomatoes. I will do the zucchini. Um, turnips might be something for the sandy area I mentioned. Cantaloupe, why not? Give it a try. Squash, give it a try. Yeah, I'll try the asparagus. I absolutely don't like celery. Lettuce. We can grow lettuce. I'm going to sort of try planting lettuce like all over the edge of the woods. And if rabbits and stuff eat it, oh well. Maybe it'll keep them out of the garden. Or maybe it'll just help their population explode so they're a bigger problem next year. I don't want the cabbage. Broccoli I want to give a try. I want to try the carrots. And that sandy area, nothing says I can't water that either. I could put a... I bought a sprinkler timer that has multiple heads, so different areas, you know, because if they all ran at once, the pressure would just be... <clears throat> so, I'm thinking that I could just have, you know, hoses all over the place, especially when I'm not home. I could get more hose, because you can buy hose. It is so cheap, you know, like, I usually only want to buy the quality hose that I can have for, like, 10 years, but you can get a 100-foot roll of hose for, like, 30 bucks, the cheap stuff, 
that kinks like crazy and it'll crack and be destroyed in the sun within a year or two. But if it's just stationary and is sitting there all year, it doesn't really matter. More cucumbers. This is a hard choice. There's so much. And also, uh, I'm going to do the jalapeno peppers, definitely. Now, I, I don't see really hot peppers, so I want to... I'm probably going to buy those separately. Actually, I have hot peppers in my basement. Dollar Tree had a whole bunch of them, along with marigolds. Marigolds, I'm not going to start in the house, but I'm going to plant them absolutely everywhere when the seedlings go in the yard. It's a natural pesticide. You know, maybe it'll keep the slugs and all the longhorn tomato uh, worms away. Although those will be good to pick off and give to animals, especially if we aren't using pesticides. You know, like pet frogs and stuff could eat the big longhorn tomato worm. No, they can't. No, they can't. They sell them in pet stores, but the tomato actually, that's bad for the frog. If it's been eating that. I just remembered that. More tomatoes. Watermelon. These are all tomatoes. Lettuce. I don't like okra at all. I've tried it. I kept trying and I didn't like it. Squash. Parsnip, maybe we'll give a try. More kale. Carrots. Melon. Wow, there's so many seeds. I'm not going to use most of these. And because I'm not going to use most of them, um, I really don't know what I should do with them. You know what I might do with this? I might, do I might donate the rest of this pack. You know? I think I will. Whatever I'm not going to use, it's donate it. Why not? And... Um, like I said, the marigolds, I'm just going to plant outside. Those things grow really quickly. I, I can just plant them outside. It doesn't matter if I wait a couple weeks to put everything out. And marigolds, a lot of times they come back because they just drop so many seeds. And you can pick off. For, so marigolds, you want to deadhead them so a new flower grows. And when you deadhead it, that's seeds. Keep that. It's good. So what we do with these are... We're going to rip these things open like this. I'll do the rest off camera. This right here, you can write on it with a Sharpie so you know what is what. And I will be doing that. Um, what's this? Plant vitamins for seedlings. Wow, I bought these in the past and it never came with fertilizer. Directions. Pour the... Okay, we're going to pour this into a gallon of water. We're going to mix it. And then... We're going to pour the gallon in here. You know, in years past, I just kept getting warm water from the sink and pouring it in here until it completely absorbed. But this made life really easy. Just going to pour this into a gallon jug I have, and we'll just keep reusing it. Yeah, I can go get a gallon jug right now out of my recycling bin from my last um, off-road trip. I have a couple of them in my recycling bin I can go grab. So that's, that's just going to be nice. This will be fun. So I'm just going to time lapse the rest of this so you guys can see the planting and these things. That'll look cool. These things absorb. These things will grow to like five times their size and they like grow. And then um, I'll make a video in about maybe two, three weeks, depending how the weather's looking when we plant them outside. Yeah, that'll be fun. I'm going to plant things like the corn and a lot of the things I mentioned in the sandy areas directly into the ground. Maybe I should buy potato bulbs. I never realized that onions, onions can come from a bulb, right? Or a seed, is that how it is? I always thought it came from a bulb because my onions always start growing here. And I know I've planted that in the past and it actually worked. These are shoes I just wear when I'm at the house and they're going in the trash. I just slipped and fell for the final time because there's like no tread whatsoever. Who even buys things like this? It's ridiculous. But I just got a, this out of the trash can outside or the recycling bin and I'm going to fill this up with warm water which helps them absorb faster than cold. I'm going to shake it around with the fertilizer poured in there and I'm going to time lapse the rest of this for you guys.
Are you kidding me? This one has a hole in the tray and it's leaking all over the rug. Seriously? Are you kidding me? This thing is leaking all over the place. Damn it. So I guess this one I'm gonna... I'm gonna have to find another thing to cover it with, I guess. I'm gonna have to make something now. I gotta get a towel. All right, everyone, that took a little while to do. Now, a lot of this stuff here, stuff I wasn't really that interested in, I'm going to plant it in random spots around the yard. Yeah, I'm just going to dig holes and ditches. Now, I'm going to grow a ton of lettuce in the protected area behind the electric fence from the bears, and I want to try carrots, but I'm going to plant those directly in the ground. All right, everyone, so what we have here in these planters is this is beefsteak, this entire row leading up to this. Then cherry tomato right here and here. I love cherry tomatoes. I'm growing a whole bunch of them. And then here we have Cheyenne peppers. Right here we have chili peppers. And we have Hungarian peppers, which are all supposed to be very spicy. I decided not to grow the jalapeno. Yes, I love jalapeno on peppers or in a salad, but they're just so spicy. I'm not going to eat a ton of them. I'm not even going to bother growing those. So we're much well more organized in these ones. So right here, these two rows are, what is that? Maro Globe Pepper, whatever that is. I'm not sure what that looks like, but I grew two rows of those, two rows of bell peppers, which I love. And right here we have, um, it's called like this, what is it? Um, Home style, I think it was. Cucumbers, these two rows right here are Boston cucumbers, these two rows. Just this row is peas. Just this row here is zucchini. Just this row is asparagus. That really intrigued me even though I don't like it because it said it lasts two or three years. I wonder if it will in this climate. And I think I might like it because um, I've never tried it other than canned. And this is zinnia flowers um, Right here. That's what a zinnia flowers. It is pretty. That's not going in the garden. That's just going to go somewhere else. So I got all these marigolds here. I'm going to plant all over the garden. They'll grow pretty fast. You see, four for a dollar from Dollar Tree, but I got them for five cents each when they were trying to get rid of them at the end of last season. So I'll definitely do a few updates on this whole thing as it comes together. Now I expect these to start sprouting in just couple of days to a week. Some of them may take 10 days or so. So we're just going to close them up like this. And as soon as they start getting tall enough where they touch, I'll straighten that out. Once they get tall enough where they start touching that, we'll take them off. And I'll probably leave them in the house for at least two weeks, maybe three weeks. And because this one, I had to use the cover because it was leaking and broken. On this one here, what I'm going to use is I have a couple boxes right here that I feel might work when I'm done eating these things. Well, I was going to give one of them to my mother, so I only have one of these plastic things. But I'm going to find other plastic containers and stuff to put over it before they start sprouting. And I just got this on the discount shelf. Maybe, maybe that'll come in handy, but I'm going to try not using any pesticides at first. I really don't like insecticides and stuff being used on my property, but I am actually forced to use this. I had to buy a whole bunch of this because the emerald ash borer is just destroying the forest so badly here.
Actually, I'm going to be a little creative. You know what I'm going to do here? I am going to, I'm going to grab from the yard a couple little sticks. I'm going to hot glue them in like six spots. And I'm going to just put saran wrap over the top of it for now. Look at this. Y'all see how it's fogging it up? Because they're still a little bit moist and warm. Well, of course they're moist, but they're still a little warm from the, um, you, I was used a lot of warm water. Not hot water, but warm water. So, and we'll plant them at some point, maybe two or three weeks, depending on the weather up here. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great night. This right here is a citronella plant I've had for five years. I bring it inside every winter, and it gets a little scraggly in the house, but I bring it back outside in the spring, and I usually cut it down to a little stub, and it always does really well. All right, everyone, so I have this really cool grow light that I bought at Home Depot. This thing's very heavy, actually. Really solid feeling. You see, it says right here, and in the instructions of the light bulb, it says to leave it on 24 hours, actually, until the seeds sprout. Then we're going to throw the switch over to grow, a different color spectrum, and then it'll be outside after that. Maybe I can use this light for something else, growing some kind of indoor plant. Well, like in a dark room. That'd be cool. Then I could have a house plant in the bedroom. That'd be interesting. And I'm going to set this up on a tripod right above all this stuff. Those are some really cool Jake bricks going by on the highway. Alright, so... We're going to leave this light on 24 hours until the majority have sprouted. This grow lamp is insanely bright. Wow. When I shut the other lights off, this room is just going to be so bright.